welcome to episode seven of Act On This TV, coming to you direct from the heart of Media City UK. Now guys, I've got a very special episode for you all today, okay? It's not only gonna be a super motivational episode, it's gonna be a super entertaining episode because my special guest is one of my best mates and also one of the wittiest guys I know, star of Downton Abbey and more recently ITV's The Level, Mr. Rob James Collier. Now, I met Rob at an acting class in central Manchester about 15 years ago and I knew the minute this guy got up and attempted one of Shakespeare's soliloquies in this heavy mank accent that we were going to be mates for life. Okay, it's been incredible seeing this guy with a business degree and no classical acting training go from modeling calculators in an Argos catalog to starring in one of the biggest shows on the planet. Okay, working with names like George Clooney and he even got to dance with Dame Maggie Smith. Now, I'm going to be talking to Rob all about that journey, what he's learned along the way, but more importantly, about what you guys can be doing to emulate that kind of success in your own acting careers. So I'm gonna head up to on the seventh right now. Don't go anywhere. I will see you guys on the inside. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, please give me a big round of applause for the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Rob James Collier. Thanks guys. Thanks, guys. You can the clap man, yourself myth, if the you legend. Want. Brilliant, fantastic. Well, I thought I'd better, uh, better give you a reasonable I intro. I don't want to clap because you told me not to move because no, of the mic situation. Don't. So now, I'm, now I'm paranoid. Any gesture? Enough. Okay. Good. Right. Um, Rob, I told everybody Ross. in the intro yeah. about when we met. We met 15 years ago almost. You make us sound like a married couple. Just look at me. I'm paranoid about you. Look, you, you breathe into the mic. That's you make better. us sound like a married couple. Yeah, that's better. You can better. pick up that in the edit. <laughs> we don't edit anything. Damn. Um, Mate, like, it's amazing. If I'd have said to you 15 years ago that we would be sat up in this bar that was never even built at this point, and I know we're in a bit of a different room tonight, and we've had a few uh, nightmares with aircon, we've got that sorted now. Um, but if I'd have said, listen, right, 15 years' time, we're going to be sat up in a bar, I'm going to be interviewing you about starring in some of the biggest shows like there's ever existed on TV, would you have ever have believed me? No. <laughs> no, I wouldn't have. <laughs> um, but here we are. Um, I'm not sure about the biggest shows that have ever existed because Night Rider was a pretty big show. Night Rider was big. Baywatch but... was a big show. Mate, Downton, you know I mean? one of the biggest shows to ever, ever exist. Yeah, and it's, 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 yeah, it's done all right. When I saw right. you get up and do that Shakespeare monologue, I would never have believed you would have been there myself. So uh, yeah, <laughs> congratulations. It wasn't my finest hour, was it? You no, know I mean? just remember Rob. So for those who like, we'll let you in a little, a little thing here because I know everybody's like, what happened? Rob basically got up at an acting class, David Johnson, shout out to you, was given a Shakespeare soliloquy, basically came in every single week and he was like, David, I'm nearly sorry, me. I've been modeling. I've not had a chance to, uh, to learn my lines. And he got up and David Johnson was like, do it anyway. And uh, Rob basically said the first line, which was something like, I don't know, the, the dew on the one. morning grass. And he just went, blah de blah de blah And I knew at that point, we were going to be mates for a long time, Rob. So, um, so it's been that amazing. That story didn't really go anywhere. <laughs> I think you had to be there. <laughs> one, of, one of those ones. Now, you've taken part in three. Thank you for that. Like three features for Acts on This so far. We did a podcast and we've done two live broadcasts. The last feature we did was two years ago, right? So you were just doing Downton Abbey season four at the time. Yes. This is hard, mate, but like a lot's happened since then. Give us like the edited highlights of the last 24 months for you, if, if that's even possible. Uh, I've, I've, I've moved house. Uh, I've done a lot of gardening. Uh, I've done a bit of acting in between. Uh, ideally, I'd like to have done more acting, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. Um, I'm not being ungrateful, you know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, bits and bobs. Um, Some highlights, man. I mean, you've danced with Dame Maggie Smith. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that as well. You worked with George Clooney. St stood on a toe, worked with the Cloonster. Yeah, yeah, I worked with George um, for a little charity thing. That was good. Yeah, I'm not, I'm no good at pointing out my own highlights and stuff like that. I'll let you do it. So, well, um, I've not done enough research. You've not, I'm focusing on my garden. I've got a lovely garden that I've worked hard on. You know what I mean? Well, you've done a lot. You've done, uh, yeah, you've had, you, well, you've had six amazing seasons of Downton Abbey. You were only supposed to be in season one as your character Thomas. Yeah. So you ended up with five seasons as a bonus there. Um, I don't want to go over loads of old ground because we talked about this on like previous podcasts and, and those and those um, those uh, broadcasts that we did. Um, but for those who like you know haven't seen any of them, and you should go back and watch all of those anyway or listen to those. Um, just give us like a bit of an overview of 
how you took that from like season one into being in it for the entire length of the series. Well, um, forever. Well, yeah, as you say, I was only supposed to be in it for. He was supposed to get killed or get sacked for uh, pinching Matthew Crawley's bottom. I think was one of the uh, <laughs> muted storylines. Um, thankfully, they changed their minds after a couple of episodes and asked me to stay in it for six years. So I was like, nice one, bit of security for six years. Um, and yeah, you just take it one year at a time. They kept asking for me back, and I'm not sure why. Well, what do you think, <laughs> really, on, 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 on a serious note, what do you think it was that made them go, we're going to keep this guy in um, after season one? I think it, uh, I think it's always easy when you're playing a bad guy and there's only a couple of bad guys in it and everyone loves a bad guy. So I think there was a bit of that. Um, otherwise, I can't say, yeah, it was me, it was my acting. I was amazing. No, I, I think he was a good character. He's written well and he came off the page. And I think it just they just realised that when it was performed, like, oh, we can't let this guy go because he, he's so devious. And I had a great, on-screen chemistry with Siobhan Finneran, who played O'Brien. She's a fantastic actress. Yeah. And we sort of clicked as people offset and on, on in the scenes on set. So I think that really helped it, that the two bad guys on smoking breaks slagging off everyone at the Abbey. That was it. Although in later seasons, like Thomas, we all started to like him a little bit more because like, he, yes, he was bad, yeah. but he stood up for people and kind of was like, you know, bad to the people who deserve for him to be bad too. Yeah, it, well, it's, you know what I mean? It's Sunday night drama. You've got, the bad guys can't ever really be wholly bad. They've got to have a lot of nice little attributes to them, haven't they? So he went on a, he went on a big journey, um, all rooted in his sexuality, and he, he turns out good at the end because that's what people want to watch at nine o'clock on a Sunday night. Happy thoughts. Happy, happy thoughts. Um, well, like I say, if you want to like know all about Rob's journey into doubt and at least the first four seasons, go um, listen to the podcast. Go to atsonlist.tv, watch the, the broadcast. Shot in my bedroom, I think. Yeah, we not Skyped together. It. We Skyped it. Yeah. Yeah, we weren't. And we like... didn't do anything. Forget that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, go, so we're not going to cover all that tonight. Um, I don't want to talk about the same stuff. But what happens then when, you know, six years down the line, they go, that's it. There's going to be no more. What goes through your head as an actor and just a human being as well? Like, do you have all those insecurities then of like, am I going to work again? What am I going to do now? Do you sit down with your agent and have a bit of a, you know, not a crisis talk as such, but like get a plan together? How were you feeling when you found out it was finished? Well, first of all, it doesn't, when a series like that with six is a remarkably long time for a drama series. So you, you kind of know the end's going to come inevitably because you can't just keep telling the same stories because obviously you, you run out of things to write. And I think it was naturally coming towards an end. Um, um, so we, we, we kind of knew it wasn't, okay, oh, we're not going again. We were like, I think we were, you know, incredibly lucky to get six series. It was that well supported around the world. So you sort of know it's coming. Um, so you can sort of plan for it a bit. Um, but for me, I'm just kind of, I like you mentioned, like the uncertainty. Yes, it brings uncertainty because you're not working. But also I think that brings fear. And I think fear can sometimes be harnessed for a good thing. Because if, you, if you're always working, you can get complacent and not work as hard as hard at your craft as you, as you should be because you've got this financial you know, net, which for me was for Downton Abbey. So when that's gone and the safety blanket's taken away, for me, it's a positive thing because it's like, ah, oh, shit, man, I've got to go and I'm back to job in actor now. I can't, I can't rest on my laurels and assume, oh, I was in that, so they're going to put me in this because it doesn't work like that. There's 21 other actors in that show, you know, big, you know, big actors, Dame Maggie Smith and stuff like that. So it was a case of, wow, back to auditioning. And after Downing, it was seven months before the, the next job, which was the level came along. Yeah, so it wasn't we're easy. It wasn't bit, everyone, how was it you in don't that get, break? You don't get plucked out in it, you know. And you can have a strategy as much as you can with your agents chat. And at the end of the day, the right part's got to pop up for you. And and you're just back to being what you were before it started, which is a job in actor. And I wouldn't have it any other way because it does give you that fear and it makes you appreciate it more the next time you're in work. Mm -hmm. being out of work if that makes sense yeah because I, no, I remember you said and something that I think you, you, you've always been there uh, over the years I've known you is like quite authentic in, in, in the jobs that you've taken and I remember like remember back in the day um, God this is years ago they offered you Sky offered you Dream Team which was a huge show at the time and you turned that down because you would have to relocate to London um, and you were like actually is this going to be viable for me to do this and that kind of thing and um I guess that was, you've always been good at dealing with fear in that way in terms of going, well, I'm not just going to do this. I'm happy to turn things down and wait for the right job to come along. Yeah. Um, well, an actor once said to me, you're only as good as the jobs you turn down. So I've taken a lot of, you know, that sage counsel. <laughs> it's right, though. I mean, you've got to be, 
if you want to end up at a certain place, you can't accept every job that's offered because you'll, that'll steer you in different directions. So you have to remember where you want to go and keep focused on that. And sometimes, you know, I've been in positions, you know, when I left Coronation Street, I didn't work for 15 months. Yeah. You know, I had a baby on the way. So you all them, so you're not millionaires when you're on shows like that. You get paid well while you're in, but it's not sort of life changing money. Um, so you have the same stresses and st struggles as the everyday man. You've got to pay your mortgage, et cetera, and all that. But you've just got to hold on and, and you know, remember your objective and just think, right, let's just, let's just say no, something will turn up. Something. I suppose it's you've got to just keep believing in yourself. Obviously, the older you get, the less risks you're willing to take when your family comes along. It gets harder to do that. But when you're younger, as I was then, when you mentioned on Dream Team, I didn't have any, I didn't have any mortgage, I didn't have any attachments. So just had my, where I wanted to go. So it was quite easy to say no. But obviously, as you get older, and some people will be working there as actors who have full-time jobs in the day, so it's harder for them to do that. So it, it's what you're willing to risk in your life um, you know what i mean so i nothing. think you've always you've always been good with that though and i think like you know when you particularly when you left curry we spent quite a while together writing a drama that may should see the light of day at some should point never should never it's terrible <laughs> i reread that a year ago i was like oh my god it's been what, a year around your house we making... thought it was going to be amazing i know one thing i got from that was how to make a good ham and cheese bagel though yeah and you discovered what hummus was yep thanks for introducing me to that you know what i mean i educated you cultured you you did and now look at you wearing a blazer and you've got shabby chic furniture with tears in it. Who knew? Not mine. You've got nice lampshades going on. Bit of a feature plant in the corner. Not mine. Well, you know, it's part of what you've created. It's part of what I've created. Um, but yeah, but you, you, you have been good. Well, my point What's was... What's the main ingredient of hummus? Chickpeas. Good lad, because I was going to walk if you didn't know the answer to that. Well done. <laughs> this, is supposed to, this is like supposed to be an accident interview. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, so yeah, my point was there, when I was round and we were doing that, you'd just left college. you had falafel? Yes. Okay, calm down. You just hadn't had it when you came to my flat you seven years to my house. ago. Okay. You brought it in that little box of Marks and Spencer's. Jerusalem artichokes? No. <laughs> right, you need to get on them. That's good stuff. <laughs> anyway. Sorry. When we were around your house, my point here is that you've always been good at fielding either offers I or... I say feeling then. Like, whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> Sorry, I've relaxed now. This is me now. This is relaxed. I don't like big intros we're and We're getting the real Rob like that, yeah. Well, you took... Because I, I was, like, in your flat a lot and I whoa, heard you. Well, that sounds wrong. <laughs> I could, let me just take, explain, people. He voluntarily came to my flat. He wasn't held there against his own will. Um, and just in case he edit it, he voluntarily came to my flat. He wasn't held against his own will. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yes. Is he right, right away from the right mic? Now. Yeah. I've jumped the lens, mate. I'm re we're we're revolutionising this. I knew it was going to be like this. I knew this was going to happen. You can go with a two shot on that one. We don't, don't panic. We've got the two shot covered. Right, it's fine. That's a two shot, right? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, we're fine. So you turned down. This is ridiculous. Don't you point your finger at me. <laughs> you. <laughs> you. <t> <laughs> this is literally ridiculous. Right, I'm relaxed. I had right. to do that to relax. You, you're in it now. I'm so in. You, so you turned it's down. It's like being in the Crucible World Snooker finalists. It's tension. It's quiet. Sorry. Go on. We spent 45 minutes getting the air conditioning turned off, and this is, get this his, is now what's happened. Get his tan shoes in shot. Look at them babies. Look at that. There you go. Oh, I just quality. snorted. Just snorted. Genuine um, leather. Listen. Made in Hungary. It's not even a drink. Sorry, go on. So you turned down a lot of work when we were... Um, we were... <laughs> my, my, my whole point in this is that I think you could have turned it down work. <laughs> <laughs> or stupid do you know what I mean but yeah but you're good at uh, actually you've, you, your gut instinct has been right for you basically you came out of Corey you turned on a load of work having the belief in yourself and then you ended up with Downton so you actually made the right decision by well, turning yeah, well, down I, stuff I don't know if it, you'd have accepted some of the work it might have taken you on a different path it's sliding doors isn't it you don't know it. it's just instinctively I always go with my gut sometimes you, you have a gut feeling and, and if you're questioning someone and you find yourself asking your friends or your agent oh I'm not sure about this should I but what ifs then you shouldn't be doing it mm -hmm. you shouldn't do that part because it's your gut telling you no and there's a reason and when you get on set I've done it where I've gone against me gut and then I'm on set and I was like I shouldn't be here it's the wrong place to be it's um yeah no in I terms of where you want to go if mm -hmm. you know your journey so, well, you just mentioned, mentioned agents there. I get asked loads of questions about agents, Rob, all the time. And I've had this one particularly over the last four weeks. Loads of people have been emailing me. Um, I don't know if it's just that time of the year, 
you know, when people are like, you know, getting over like the new year and they want a new start or whatever. But loads of people have been like, look, I'm thinking of changing agents. I feel like I need a, a kick, some more motivation. Uh, maybe, you know, a, a fresh start with a new agent would be good for me. Um, I know you've changed agents a few times. <laughs> make me sound like such a whore yeah that a lot of people are like staying i think with agents because they don't they hate the thought of this breakup and like i don't know how i'm going to upset them what they're going to think of me it all this can kind of be stuff. like an actual breaking up with with a girlfriend or a boyfriend how have you be. dealt with it then and, and how have you known more importantly when it is time to change uh, first of all i think people you shouldn't worry an agency is a two-way thing so you know never worry about leaving an agent so I hope you are enjoying this interview so far. All right, there's still so much more to come in this chat. If you want to get access to it, I need you to do two very simple things for me. All right, one, I need you to be on the actonlist.tv website. Okay, so if you're watching this preview on YouTube or Twitter or Facebook or anywhere else like that, look for a link in the description of the video, click it and it's going to take you over to actonlist.tv where you will find the full interview. Okay, secondly, I need you to then log into or sign up for a premium account to the site, okay? If you've already got a premium account, just log in at the top of the page and you'll get full access straight away. If you've not, then have a look underneath the video on actonlist.tv on that page and you'll see a little description of how you can get a premium account very, very quickly. It'll take you like two minutes, um, if that. And you'll also see a link that's gonna uh, take you to a page where we'll explain how we use revenue from premium memberships to fund and help some amazing charities, okay? So it's an absolute win-win situation. So to recap, um, click on the link if you're not already on actsonlist.tv that you'll find in the description of this preview. And then once there, log into a premium account or get yourself one, okay? It's gonna tell you underneath the video how you can do that. Or if you've got a free account, how you can upgrade to one as well. All right, so I won't keep you any longer, but do that and you'll get full access. I'll see you back in that interview very, very soon. Bye for now.